Welcome to the first of three videos on Microsoft Excel. In this video, I introduce spreadsheets and demonstrate basic data entry. I know your goal is to learn the most in the least amount of time, so let's get started. The term spreadsheet predates computers. Before computers, a spreadsheet was a large sheet of paper with data organized into rows and columns. This organization was ideal for recording financial transactions because it kept numbers in nice, neat rows and columns. Fast forward to today, and we have electronic spreadsheets, which not only record data in rows and columns, but can also do calculations on this data. So, a spreadsheet is a tool for storing, manipulating, and communicating numbers. Just as a word processor can help you prepare documents that are primarily prose, a spreadsheet can help you prepare documents that are primarily numbers. Next to word processors, spreadsheets are probably the second most popular office productivity tool. Spreadsheets bring order to your financial decision making. For example, if you're thinking of purchasing a new car, you could analyze the options on paper. However, Doing manual calculations is very error-prone and inefficient. If just one number changes, it could cause extensive rework. Also, it's not easy to explore different scenarios when you're doing everything by hand. Enter electronic spreadsheets. A spreadsheet neatly organizes data into rows and columns. Plus, you can make changes to stored values and observe the effects on calculated values. For example, what's that, honey? You want to know how much the payments will be if we finance for four rather than five years? I don't know. Let me check. Hmm. Looks like it'll be $341 rather than $282. That's about $60 more a month. What's that? How much will we save in interest? I don't know. Let me check. And it goes on and on. You can copy and paste what's here to create different scenarios that'll make it easy to compare different options. But wait, there's more. That was an example of how to use formulas in spreadsheets to calculate results from input values. For example, the payment function was used to calculate monthly payments from principal, interest rate, and years financed. However, Sometimes you need to work in reverse. Sometimes you know the results you want from a formula, but aren't sure what input values are needed to get there. For example, let's say you want to keep your payments below 300 a month. Monthly payment is the calculated result of the payment function. The question is, what combination of price, down payment, interest rate, and years financed is needed to keep the payments or output below a certain value? To find the answer, you would try different input values until you find a combination that produced the result you wanted. This type of activity is called what-if analysis. Let's do an example. Let's say you're set on a certain car and just want to know how much more you need to put down in order to keep the payments under $300 a month. Well, a down payment of $4,000 obviously isn't enough. What if the down payment was $5,000? Hmm, that's not enough. What about 6000 Oh, that's too much. Okay, it's somewhere between 5000 and 6000 Let's try 5500 huh, Too low. Let's try 5700 uh, That's close enough. How about that? We just used what-if analysis to calculate how much we need to put down in order to keep our monthly payment under $300. What's interesting is the result we were seeking, that is the down payment, turned out to be an input to our formula rather than an output. I think this is a good example of what if analysis. That concludes the motivation portion of this video. I'm gonna assume at this point that you're now highly motivated to learn more about creating spreadsheets with Excel. Let's start with some basic concepts. The work area of Excel is organized as a grid of rows and columns. Letters across the top label columns. Numbers along the left label rows. Every cell 
is at the intersection of a row and column. You can reference any cell in a worksheet using a cell reference, which is a combination of the column letter and the row number. For example, the currently selected cell is C5 because it's in column C and row 5. Cell references are often used in formulas. For example, the formula here for amount financed is B10 minus B11, or total due minus down payment. Next, the difference between a workbook and a worksheet. The whole file is called a workbook or spreadsheet. A workbook contains one or more worksheets. The tabs at the bottom of an Excel file represent worksheets. Worksheets help you organize related data. For example, here I have separate tabs for the separate worksheets I plan to use during this video. Here are a few commands related to worksheets. You can create a new worksheet by clicking this button. You can rename a worksheet by right-clicking and selecting Rename. A faster way to rename a worksheet is to simply double-click the name and type. You can delete a worksheet by right-clicking and selecting Delete. You can adjust the order of worksheets by clicking and dragging. Next up, entering data. To enter data, select a cell and just type. The data you type will go to the active cell. When you're done typing, press Enter or select another cell in the spreadsheet. Notice you can also enter or edit the contents of a cell from the formula bar. Be aware, there's a difference between single and double clicking a cell when entering data. When you single click a cell and type, it replaces the contents. When you double click a cell and type, you're adding to the existing contents. The next feature I want to demonstrate is clearing the contents of cells. To clear the contents of a cell, select the cell or click and drag to select multiple cells and then press the delete key. Another option for clearing the contents of a cell is to select the cells, go to the home tab, and select the eraser in the edit group. I'm going to select clear all. Note you can also clear just the formatting. I'll demonstrate by clearing the formatting for this text. I made it right aligned earlier. By default text is left aligned. When I clear the formatting it reverts back to the default left aligned style. Next topic, cell data types. There are three types of data that can be entered into a cell, text, numbers, and formulas. Text is alphanumeric characters such as letters, numbers, and symbols. A number by itself in a cell is treated as a numeric value that can be used in calculations and formulas. Formulas start with an equal sign and may include cell references, operations, numbers, and functions. Notice that Excel detects the type of data entered into a cell and formats the data differently depending on the data type. You can see here that text is left aligned by default. Numbers and numeric values from formulas are right aligned. And that makes sense if you think about it. Numbers are easier to work with when they're right aligned. Notice in this example that the cell contains the formula B4 plus 1, but the value displayed is the result of the formula, or 37. If for some reason you want to see the formulas in your worksheet rather than the resulting text, go to the Formulas tab and select Show Formulas. 
Learn to love formulas. The power of spreadsheets come from the ability to define computation as formulas where the results of calculations depend on the contents of other cells. I'll talk more about formulas in a later video. Next, a couple of easy topics. First, inserting rows and columns. Let's say you wanted to add another column here. To insert a column, select the column to the right of where you would like the new column, right click, and select Insert. I'll also insert a row just for good measure. Notice the column or row is inserted before the column or row you selected. Another easy feature that's related is resizing rows and columns. To resize a row or column, click and drag the boundary after the row or the column. You can also double click the boundary to get a nice tight fit. Speaking of column resizing, you might find Excel displaying pound signs in place of numbers. Excel does this when the column isn't wide enough to display the whole number. And this makes sense when you think about it. If Excel displayed part of a number or allowed numbers to overlap, you'd have no way of knowing which cells had correct numbers and which ones had truncated numbers. The final feature I want to discuss is moving and copying cells. To move one or more cells, select the cell or cells by clicking and dragging, select cut, set the insertion point where you want to move the cells to, and select paste. To copy, I'm going to do the same thing, but select copy rather than cut. Uh, by the way, uh, to get rid of these marching ants, press escape. Moving and copying text is simple. Things get a bit more complicated when moving or copying cells that are referenced in other cells or that have cell references of their own. Let's do an example. The cell B5 has a formula with a reference to B4. There's one reference. I'm going to add a formula down here in the worksheet with a reference to B5. There's another reference. So now the cell B5 both has a reference to a cell and is referenced by another cell. So what happens when we move it? I'll cut and paste it. Now let's check things out here. The reference inside the cell stayed the same, but the reference to the cell change to the new location. And when you think about it, that's reasonable, that's logical behavior. If you move the contents of a cell, you probably want all references to that cell to point to the new location. And if you move a cell, you probably don't want to change any of the references within the cell. I'm going to undo that change because I want to explore what happens when I copy rather than move. Well, something's different because there's a different value here when I copied versus when I just moved the cell. Let's check it out. Looks like we got the reverse behavior. The reference within the cell changed by an amount relative to the distance moved. What was B4 changed to C5 because I moved it one column over and one row down. You're going to see in the next video just how valuable this behavior is. And so what about the reference to the cell that we copied? The reference to the cell didn't change this time. And that seems logical. Since I was copying the cell, references to the original cell still had something to reference. So no need to update them. Well, that concludes the first of three videos on Excel. In the next video, I demonstrate basic cell formatting.